Submarines are astounding inventions, albeit primarily designed for war. They deserve admiration for their technological advancements. However, many of these marvels now lie abandoned. Their stories, while forgotten by some, are still remembered by many. From the mysterious yellow submarine of Coney Island to the most significant watercraft in the world, here are 20 abandoned submarines that actually exist. Number 20. The Mysterious Coney Island Submarine Coney Island. Known for being an amusement resort, this place has been hiding a curious piece of history. If you look into the murky waters of Coney Island Creek, it's easy to see a yellow submarine barely breaking through the water surface. The story of this watercraft began back in the 1960s with Jerry Bianco, the ship fitter from the Brooklyn Navy Yard. He heard a rumor about six German U-boats sunk off Long Island with mercury ballast. Bianco aimed to find them and then locate and salvage the Andrea Doria, an Italian liner for its scrap metal, valued at $6 million, and a solid silver figurehead worth $250,000. Naturally, Bianco devised a way to reach these sunken riches. The answer? A submarine that can reach the wreck. Bianco then began to construct this yellow submarine, but with no resources, he used scrap metal found in the yards along Coney Island Creek. Even the color of the submarine itself wasn't chosen for its aesthetic impact, but for the affordability of the paint. You see, yellow chromium paint was among the cheapest colors at the time. And so, from a single man's effort, Quester 1 was completed. The launch of Quester 1 in 1970 was filled with high hopes, but ended in a humorous conclusion. At its maiden launch, the submarine unfortunately tilted sideways and became stuck in the creek. The incident, captured by the media, turned Bianco into a local joke, at least for some. Despite efforts to right the submarine and restore its functionality, the vessel never achieved its intended purpose. Over time, parts of the submarine were stolen, and it was left to rust peacefully in the creek. Today, the Quester 1, with its faded yellow paint and rusty exterior, remains a curious sight in Coney Island Creek. This oddity, more than four decades old, continues to attract tourists to the creek. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now. Number 19. USS Kavala On the 29th of February, 1944, USS Kavala, a Gato-class submarine, was commissioned by the United States Navy. Now, if you're knowledgeable about the two world wars, perhaps you'll recognize this submarine as the Lucky Lady or the Avenger of Pearl Harbor. Kavala was part of many significant wins by the Navy. It participated in six war patrols during World War II, ranging from the Philippine Sea to the South China and Java Seas. In these missions, Kavala not only engaged and destroyed enemy vessels, but also performed rescue operations, such as aiding the damaged HMS Terrapin in 1945. But perhaps Kavala's most significant contribution was sinking the Japanese aircraft carrier Shokaku, one of the carriers involved in the attack on Pearl Harbor on June 19, 1944. This accomplishment earned Kavala a presidential unit citation for its outstanding performance. After the war, Kavala was decommissioned in 1946, but its reign didn't end just yet. Less than a decade later, the submarine was recommissioned in 1951 during the Cold War and was transformed into a hunter-killer submarine, a watercraft designed to sink other submarines equipped with advanced sonar systems. Kavala continued to serve in various capacities, including NATO exercises, until it was finally decommissioned in 1969. Today, the USS Kavala rests at SeaWorld Park in Galveston, Texas, serving as a museum ship at the American Undersea Warfare Center. Number 18. HMCS Submarine Ojibwe As the first submarine of the Royal Canadian Navy, HMCS Submarine Ojibwe naturally is among the most significant. Commissioned on September 23, 1965, this vessel played a crucial role during the Cold War. Constructed at Chatham Dockyard in the UK, the Ojibwe was laid down on September 27, 1962, and launched on February 29, 1964. This submarine was designed for stealth and efficiency, being lighter than smaller units, with a displacement of 1,635.8 tons on the surface and 2,448.7 tons submerged. It measured about 295 feet in length and it could reach a speed of 12 knots surfaced and 17 knots submerged. 
This watercraft was also equipped with eight 21-inch torpedo tubes, making it among the most lethal submarines of the Canadian Navy. Moreover, the Ojibwe, along with its sister submarines, represented the Oberon class, known for being among the quietest in the world. These submarines were tasked with challenging missions, including tracking Soviet ballistic missile submarines in the Atlantic during the 1970s. With its armament, speed, and weight, it operated like a well-oiled machine. Essentially, this watercraft engaged in intelligence gathering missions as part of an exchange program with the Royal Navy. The reign of HMCS submarine Ojibwe ended on May 21, 1998, as it was decommissioned and began its new purpose as a museum ship. If you're curious, it's now located in Port Burwell, Ontario, Canada. Number 17. HMS Thetis A tragic and brief history. This sums up the life of HMS Thetis. This watercraft was a Group 1 T-Class submarine of the Royal Navy. It was 275 feet long, had a beam of 26 feet 6 inches, and when surfaced, displaced 1,090 long tons. It was powered by two 5,000 horsepower diesel engines and two 2,900 horsepower electric motors, allowing it to reach a top speed of 15.25 knots surfaced and 9 knots submerged. It was another formidable submarine, but tragedy immediately struck on its maiden voyage during dive trials in Liverpool Bay on June 1, 1939. The Thetis carried not only its standard crew of 59, but also 44 additional personnel, including shipyard workers, technical advisors, and naval observers. This overcrowding complicated the vessel's test operation. During the trials, a critical error occurred when the torpedo tube outer doors were not properly closed due to clogged drain tubes, which led to uncontrolled flooding in the forward torpedo room. In an attempt to surface, the submarine raised its stern, but it eventually sank bow down in 150 feet of water. While the stern of the Thetis briefly surfaced, most of the crew remained trapped inside. Only four people managed to escape using the submarine's escape chamber. The rest, a total of 99 individuals, tragically died from carbon dioxide poisoning as they were unable to escape. After the incident, the Thetis was salvaged, repaired, and recommissioned as HMS Thunderbolt in 1940. Under this new name, it briefly served during World War II sinking the Italian submarine Capitano Tarantini in the Bay of Biscay in December 1940. However, the HMS Thunderbolt met its end when it was sunk off Sicily on March 14, 1943, with all hands lost. This marked the second sinking of the vessel and marked its ultimate end. Number 16. USS Nautilus Captain Hyman G. Rickover is considered the father of the nuclear navy, Rickover played a significant role in creating the USS Nautilus, or SSN 571, the world's first operational nuclear-powered submarine. The keel of the Nautilus was laid at the Electric Boat Division in Groton, Connecticut, on June 14, 1952, during the presidency of Harry S. Truman. Two years later, on January 21, 1954, the submarine was christened and launched by Mamie Eisenhower. However, it wasn't until September 30, 1954, that the Nautilus was officially commissioned under the command of Commander Eugene P. Wilkinson. The operational capabilities of the Nautilus were groundbreaking. On January 17, 1955, it embarked on its maiden voyage under nuclear power. Throughout its service, the submarine shattered numerous records, including the longest submerged cruise by a submarine and the highest sustained submerged speed at that time. One of the USS Nautilus's most remarkable achievements was its voyage beneath the geographic North Pole in August 1958, a feat that had never been accomplished before by any other vessel. After 25 years of service covering a staggering 500,000 miles, the Nautilus was decommissioned on March 3, 1980. Recognizing its significant contributions to naval history and technology, the Nautilus was designated a National Historic Landmark in 1982. Today, it serves as a museum ship at the Submarine Force Museum in Groton, Connecticut. Number 15. USS Clamagor On February 25, 1945, the USS Clamagor, a below-class submarine, was launched by Electric Boat Company in Groton, Connecticut. Clamagor, named after the blue parrotfish known for its presence in the shallow waters of the West Indies and the Chesapeake Bay, started her journey in a world at war. However, she never fired not once during her service in the war. Her early days were spent in Key West, Florida, 
engaging in operations with various fleet units and contributing to the training at the fleet sonar school. It wasn't long before she became known as the Grey Ghost off the Florida coast for her stealth and efficiency. The submarine underwent two major upgrades, transforming from a Guppy II to a more advanced Guppy III configuration. This included a 15-foot hull extension and the installation of the Puff's passive ranging sonar, which made her one of only nine boats to receive such extensive modifications. Serving the Navy for 30 years, the Clamagore was a silent witness to the transition from World War II to the Cold War, quietly adapting to the new realities of naval engagement. After decommissioning in 1975, she started a new chapter as a museum ship at the Patriots Point Naval and Maritime Museum in Charleston, South Carolina in 1979. Unfortunately, in 2022, she was dismantled and recycled due to hull degradation, finally ending her existence. Number 14. La Route Table Formidable, fearsome. These words describe what La Route Table means in French. This watercraft, launched on March 29, 1967, was the lead boat in its class and the first ballistic missile submarine in the French Marine Nationale. Its name is quite befitting. Measuring 420 feet long and weighing 8,000 tons, this monster was powered by a pressurized water reactor, propelling it to speeds over 20 knots. It underwent several upgrades to improve its missiles. La Redoutable completed 51 patrols of 70 days each, totaling around 90,000 hours of diving and covering approximately 800,000 miles. That's equivalent to almost traveling around the Earth not once, not twice, but 32 times. After almost 24 years of service, La Redoutable, the formidable, became a museum ship. It was opened to the public in 2002 at a naval museum in cherbourg octeville France, as the largest submarine open for visitors. Number 13. Russian Submarine B-80 During the Cold War era, the Russian submarine B-80 was among the watercraft built at the 402 shipyard in Molotovsk, Russia. It served several purposes, including as a patrol submarine to the South Atlantic in 1958 alongside the B-75, patrolling the coast of South America before returning to the Arctic Ocean. In 1968, it ventured into the Mediterranean and was stationed in Alexandria, Egypt. Later, B-80 rejoined the Northern Fleet and patrolled the Northern Sea until 1988, where it was placed in reserve and decommissioned in 1990. However, a year later, it was sold in 1991 to private buyers based in the Netherlands. It changed hands several times, with many plans to renovate and change it. Unfortunately, the B-80 was never improved. And in 2019, after a lot of dispute about who its legal owner was, the City Council of Amsterdam ordered it to be dismantled. What a tragic end for a functional submarine. Number 12. German Submarine U-47 if you're interested in submarines, perhaps you've heard about the German submarine U-47. After all, this watercraft is among the most renowned and feared submarines of World War II. It's often remembered for its extraordinary effectiveness and ranks among the most successful German U-boats of the war. Commissioned into the Kriegsmarine on December 17, 1938, this Type 7B U-boat embarked on a career that would see it sink 31 enemy vessels including the notable British battleship HMS Royal Oak, and damaged nine more. Throughout its service, the U-47 completed 10 combat patrols and spent a total of 238 days at sea, achieving a significant tonnage in sunk enemy ships. It was known for the raid on Scapa Flow on October 14, 1939, where it daringly entered the British naval base and sank the HMS Royal Oak. This operation was audacious and risky, and yet, with the guidance of its commander, the U-47 completed the mission. Unfortunately, the latter part of its life was shrouded in mystery. On March 7, 1941, the submarine vanished off radar in the North Atlantic, south of Iceland. The circumstances of its disappearance remain unclear, with various theories suggesting it could have been lost to mines, its own torpedoes, or an attack by British corvettes. All 45 crew members were lost with the submarine. However, Many believe that it's somewhere out there, abandoned and unused. Number 11. U-534 Commissioned on December 23, 1942, the U-534 was used chiefly as a platform for weapons testing rather than as a frontline combat vessel. It was also deployed as a weather ship in the North Atlantic, 
strategically gathering meteorological data crucial for military operations. However, on May 5, 1945, U-534 sank in the Kattegat, about 12 miles northeast of the Danish island of Anholt. They were trying to form a convoy and continue sailing north, but were attacked by two British RAF Liberator aircraft. The crew of the U-534 managed to shoot down one bomber and avoid nine depth charges, but then they were hit by a depth charge from the other bomber. This caused serious damage to the submarine, which began to take on water and sank. All 52 crew members escaped, with five initially trapped but later managing to escape through the torpedo loading hatch. Sadly, one crew member died from lung damage, and two others died from exposure to the water. It wasn't until August 23, 1993 that it was salvaged and moved to Woodside Ferry Birkenhead, transforming the submarine into the U-Boat Story Museum. Number 10. HNLMS Tonine Launched on June 14, 1965 and commissioned on February 24, 1966, the Tonine was particularly known for its three-cylinder design. This made the Tonine a formidable counter against Soviet submarines easily making it among the most integral part of NATO's defense strategy during the Cold War. Built at the Wilton Feyenoord shipyard in Scheidem, the Tonine measured 256 feet 11 inches long with a beam of 25 feet 7 inches. It was the perfect size and had the ideal structure for deeper dives. What's more, the propulsion system of the Tonine consisted of two diesel engines and two electric motors, enabling it to reach speeds of 14.5 knots surfaced and 17 knots submerged. It was armed with four 21-inch bow and stern torpedo tubes, demonstrating its formidable capabilities as a combat vessel. However, after a quarter century of service, the Tonine was decommissioned on January 10, 1991. In the summer of 1994, it found a new lease on life as a museum ship at the Dutch Navy Museum in Den Helder as the only publicly accessible submarine in the country. Number 9. USS Ling The USS Ling, or SS-297, was a below-class submarine named for the Cobia fish, also known as Ling. Although laid down on November 2, 1942 at the Cramp Shipbuilding Company in Philadelphia, it wasn't until the 15th of August that year that the submarine was launched. After two years, it was eventually commissioned on June 8, 1945. This delay was unusually long for World War II submarines making her entrance into service somewhat anticlimactic as the war was already winding down. Contrary to the long wait for her launch, Ling's service was relatively short, being decommissioned in October 1946. However, in the 1960s, the Ling was converted into a training ship in Brooklyn, New York, simulating submarine operations. After her service, she was then donated to the Submarine Memorial Association. She was restored to near-mint condition and was open to the public and became an open museum ship in Hackensack, New Jersey in 1972. Number 8. Soviet Submarine B-39 Laid down on February 9, 1962 at the Admiralty Shipyard in Leningrad, it was launched on April 15, 1967 and commissioned later that year on December 28. The B-39 served in the Soviet Navy's Pacific Fleet stationed in Vladivostok, and strategically patrolled the North Pacific, including near the United States and Canadian coasts. Decommissioned in 1994, B-39 eventually became a museum ship in San Diego, California in 2005. However, in October 2021, due to deterioration, a decision was made to scrap the submarine. Number 7. U-Boat U-995 Constructed in the midst of World War II, U-995 first emerged from the docks of Hamburg on November 25, 1942. It was commissioned on September 16, 1943, with Oberlieutenant Walter Kuntop taking the helm as its first commander. This Type 7C-41 U-boat, a fine specimen of German engineering, was not just a hulking mass of metal, but a predator of the seas. Weighing in at a surface displacement of 759 tons and a submerged displacement of 860 tons, this submarine stretched to an impressive length of 220 feet 2 inches, with a beam of 20 feet 4 inches. During its service, U-995 completed nine patrols and was involved in five wolf packs, demonstrating the strategic importance of U-boats in the Battle of the Atlantic. The submarine's successes included sinking three merchant ships, 
one warship and one auxiliary warship while rendering another merchant ship a total loss. In May 1945, the submarine was surrendered to the British and later handed over to Norway. After serving as the Norwegian submarine Kora, it was finally sold back to Germany in 1971 for a ceremonial price of one Deutschmark. Today, U-995 sits proudly at the Lebeau Naval Memorial near Kiel. Number 6. U-505 U-505 was a German Type 9C U-boat built for the Kriegsmarine during the Second World War. She was commissioned in 1941, and she was quickly deployed between January 1942 and June 1944. She went on 12 patrols in total, and she managed to sink eight merchant ships, which is quite an impressive record. However, her service was also overshadowed by a series of unfortunate events. During her service, U-505 gained a somewhat dubious reputation for being the most heavily damaged U-boat to return to port successfully. If that wasn't enough, the submarine also witnessed the tragic death of her second commanding officer during her 10th patrol after a string of six unsuccessful missions. This streak of bad luck seemed to follow U-505 throughout her wartime service. However, on June 4, 1944, U-505 was captured by the U.S. Navy's Task Group 22.3 off the West African coast. This marked the first time the U.S. Navy had seized an enemy vessel at sea since the War of 1812, and the event provided the Allies with invaluable intelligence, including codebooks and other secret materials. After that, the submarine became shrouded in secrecy. After her capture, the U-boat was towed to Bermuda, and her crew was interred at a U.S. prisoner of war camp. The entire incident was classified to prevent the Germans from learning about it, only becoming public knowledge after Germany's surrender in 1945. The same year, U-505 was donated to the Museum of Science and Industry in Chicago, where she was transformed into a museum ship. Number 5. USS Scorpion Launched on December 19, 1959, and commissioned on July 29, 1960, the Scorpion was a nuclear-powered submarine that served in the United States Navy. In fact, it was the sixth vessel and second submarine in the U.S. Navy to carry that name. This submarine was stationed primarily in Norfolk, Virginia as a 251-foot watercraft powered by a single Westinghouse S5W nuclear reactor, enabling her to travel underwater at a brisk 33 knots. This advanced vessel was equipped with 533mm torpedo tubes, anti-surface and anti-submarine weapons, including two nuclear torpedoes, making it a critical asset during the tense U.S.-USSR standoffs. However, the USS Scorpion service was cut tragically short. In February 1967, she underwent what was supposed to be a complete overhaul at Norfolk Naval Shipyard. Due to Cold War pressures and a high demand for her return to service, the overhaul was limited to emergency repairs, neglecting some critical safety updates. Several months later, though, the Scorpion was deemed ready for action again under a new commanding officer, Commander Francis Slattery. The Scorpion's final mission began on February 15, 1968, when she set sail for the Mediterranean as part of the Sixth Fleet. After completing her routine operations, the submarine was tasked with a high-stakes espionage mission against a Soviet naval task force near the Canary Islands. On May 21, 1968, the Scorpion reported its position 250 miles southwest of the Azores, estimating its return on May 27. However, the submarine never returned, leading to widespread concern and a subsequent search operation. The Navy initially presented a cover-up, claiming the Scorpion had been on a routine operation and failed to return without explanation. However, it was later revealed that the Navy had known about the Scorpion's sinking on May 22, five days before its expected return. This revelation sparked various theories about the submarine's fate, including potential encounters with Soviet forces. The wreck of the USS Scorpion was eventually discovered in 1968 by the research ship USNS Miser, lying on the ocean floor about two miles deep. The discovery led to various investigations, but the official Navy report concluded that the cause of the loss of the Scorpion cannot be ascertained from many available evidence. Over the years, there have been speculations ranging from internal mechanical failures to hostile engagements with Soviet submarines, but the actual cause of the USS Scorpion's sinking remains a mystery. Number 4. Russian Submarine Kursk The Kursk was a Project 949A anti-submarine 
Not just a simple watercraft, but the largest in the Russian Navy, with a size comparable to two 747 jumbo jets. In August 2000, Kursk participated in Summer X, a large-scale naval exercise in the Barents Sea. This exercise was notable as it was the first significant training mission the Russian Navy had undertaken in over a decade, marking a significant moment post the dissolution of the Soviet Union. Kursk, renowned for its exemplary performance, was recognized for having the best submarine crew in the Northern Fleet. Its formidable capabilities were designed to take on an entire U.S. aircraft carrier group. However, it wasn't immune to tragedy, one that struck on August 12, 2000. As Kursk prepared to fire dummy torpedoes during the exercise, a catastrophic explosion occurred. Initial seismic events registered a small blast, but what followed two minutes later was far more devastating. A second, much larger explosion equivalent to several tons of TNT ripping through the submarine. The response to the disaster was fraught with issues. The Russian Navy's attempt to rescue the crew were hampered by inadequate equipment and delayed acceptance of international assistance. It wasn't until five days after the disaster that President Vladimir Putin authorized foreign help. British and Norwegian divers eventually reached the submarine, but it was too late. There were no survivors. The recovery of the Kursk was a monumental task undertaken by the Dutch company Mamoet. This marked one of the most tragic events in submarine history. Number 3. USS Thresher Located on June 9, 1960 from the Portsmouth Naval Yard in New Hampshire, the Thresher was the lead boat in its class of nuclear-powered attack submarines in the United States Navy. After its commissioning on August 3, 1961, Thresher underwent rigorous sea trials and testing of its advanced technological features and weapons. During one incident in San Juan, Puerto Rico, the submarine's backup diesel generator broke down, leading to high temperatures and humidity inside the vessel until power could be restored. The Thresher's tragic end came on April 10, 1963, during deep diving exercises off the coast of Cape Cod, Massachusetts. Communication with the submarine rescue ship USS Skylark revealed that Thresher was experiencing minor problems. Shortly after, sonar images showed the submarine breaking apart as it descended to the ocean floor, resulting in the loss of all 129 crew and civilians aboard. This catastrophe is remembered as a sorrowful event in naval history. Number 2. French Submarine Surcouf the Serkouf, launched on November 18, 1929, and commissioned on May 3, 1934, this submarine was the largest in the world until the Japanese introduced the I-400 class in 1944. She was a submarine cruiser armed with twin 203mm guns, 10 torpedo tubes, and capable of carrying a Besson MB-411 float plane for reconnaissance. Her considerable size complemented this impressive arsenal. Over 300 feet long, with a top speed of 18 knots when surfaced and 10 knots submerged. The Sarkouf was designed under the limitations of the Washington Naval Treaty, which amusingly didn't place restrictions on submarines. France, seizing the opportunity, embarked on the construction of this naval behemoth. The idea was that she would be the first of three such cruiser submarines, but fate and the London Naval Treaty decided otherwise. Sarkouf remained the sole giant of her class. The Sarkouf was cumbersome, and rolled alarmingly in heavy seas. Her diesel engines were as reliable as a weather forecast in spring, and she leaked around her gun turrets. These issues, especially her slow diving time, made her a bit of a sitting duck during conflicts. With the fall of France in 1940, the Sercouf found herself in a geopolitical conundrum. Her crew, facing divided loyalties and concerns for families back home, had to make tough decisions. Eventually, Sarkouf ended up in British hands as part of Operation Catapult, aimed at preventing French ships from joining the German Kriegsmarine. Under the Free French Flag, the Sarkouf took on a new role, primarily escorting Allied convoys across the Atlantic. However, her service during the war was marred by mechanical issues and suspicions from both the French and British sides about her loyalty. However, on the night of February 18 to 19, 1942, the Sarkouf disappeared in the Caribbean Sea. There were various theories about her fate, with the most accepted being a collision with the American freighter Thompson Likes. However, the lack of definitive evidence and the absence of her wreck left the story open to speculation to this day. And now, it's time for today's topic. During World War II, many submarines sank, each owned by different countries. Among them were several that were owned by the British, 
and for years, they were lost at sea. After eight decades, the once lost submarine is now found, or at least, that's what experts believe. Off the coast of Norway was a submarine that has now been home to bizarre creatures, so bizarre that even researchers labeled them as strange. After decades of submersion, the submarine has transformed from a war machine into a sanctuary for unimaginable creatures. Now who knows what creatures have made their home in other abandoned submarines in the ocean? Number 1. Japanese Submarine I-52 The Japanese Submarine I-52, built between 1943 and 1944, was part of the Imperial Japanese Navy during the Second World War. Although designed as a cargo carrier, she was tough and fast, boasting an impressive range of 21,000 nautical miles at 12 knots, and was manned by a crew of 94. In March 1944, I-52 set out from Kure, Japan, on her maiden voyage destined for then-German-occupied Lorient, France. She was carrying 11 tons of tungsten and 2.2 tons of gold in 146 bars, among other strategic materials. The gold was intended as payment for German technology and military supplies. After a stop in Singapore to load additional materials, including rubber and quinine, I-52 began her perilous journey across the Indian Ocean towards the Atlantic. However, the Allies, thanks to their signal intelligence and code-breaking capabilities, were well aware of I-52's mission and her route. The U.S. Navy, with the help of decoded Japanese messages, had been closely monitoring I-52's journey from Singapore. The submarine's fate was sealed on the night of June 23, 1944, approximately 850 nautical miles west of the Cape Verde Islands. Following a rendezvous with the German U-boat U-530, where she received fuel and radar equipment, I-52 was detected by an Avenger bomber from the USS Bogue. After an acoustic torpedo attack, the I-52 sank. The location of I-52 remained a mystery for over five decades, until 1995, when the wreck was discovered in over 17,000 feet of water. It was found remarkably intact, lying upright on the seabed. Well, all of these submarines are laden with history. What other things do you want to see next? Drop your thoughts in the comments down below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on the screen right now, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, everybody.